Some people might say, well, geez, Jane, you were at the wrong place at the wrong time. And I, I thought that too at the time. But then when I reflect on my life and why maybe that happened to me, I don't think that. I actually think I was probably in the right place at the wrong time. Give me a wake-up call about what, what my next part of my life is going to be like. Oftentimes when we go through a crisis, we say, oh my gosh, oh my goodness, oh my God. It's our body's way of asking for help. It's our brain's way of saying, what's next? And that's what anxiety is. Anxiety is fear about the future and what comes next. And depression is sadness about the past. The topic today is about change and about achieving that state of mind where you can sort of cope with the unexpected and, and bounce back a little more quickly. So what do you do when your life is interrupted, rudely interrupted, as I would call it? How do you spend your time? So that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm Jean and I am um, very, very blessed and grateful to be an award-winning author. Uh, Flutter Side Up, How I Survived My Most Terrible Year, and Created My Super Awesome Life. A big part of that is about Beaver Valley, about my journey to Beaver Valley in 1977 and how I got back here after my most terrible year. So um, I'll tell you a little bit about that today. Put up your hand if over the past three to five years you had something just totally out of left field happen to you that you didn't expect. Okay, me too. Okay, you're in the right room. I think COVID has really taught us about the unexpected and that life can change in an instant, sometimes for the good and sometimes not so good. My journey started in 2017. When my life got rudely interrupted, I got slammed in the head with a volleyball. And I don't mean a tap, I mean a, like a, a, a young man that was practicing spikes and smashed me square in the head. And just to give you an idea of what that might feel like, it only takes 1.7 seconds from the point of contact to the point where a volleyball would hit the floor, but the problem is it didn't bounce. It bounced off my head. How many of you know somebody that's had a stroke? Okay, so you know what speech aphasia is. Okay, so that's what happened to me. I had speech aphasia, and guess what I did for a living before? I got slammed in the head. I talked. I went around the world, and I worked at the NATO school in Obermergau, Germany, and I worked with the Canadian forces and U.S. forces for the State Department, and I worked for Sobeys and Coca-Cola and big companies, and I helped them solve their problems. I helped facilitate group workshops and say, I said, well, geez, hi, Mary, you know, how are you? And what are you thinking about? And oh, gosh, Gladys, I think you're thinking about the same thing. And then put it all together. And you know what? I think this will be the solution. Guess what Jane couldn't do anymore? I couldn't follow conversation. I couldn't remember people's names. But I can tell you, there were a lot of people that didn't want to be around me for saying, when I had all these things happening, because it was like, well, yikes, I don't want that to happen to me. But I can bet you the same people that didn't want to be around me really want to be around me now, because I'm on television, <laughs> I'm on the radio, and I wrote some books. But that's not the reason to be around me. The reason to be around each other is because we're all in this together. Mindfulness is living purposefully and intentionally. And that's what the mindfulness philosophy really is. It's controlling your response. How do you get back into mindfulness? I call it prepaving your day. A beautiful mindset. What brings you joy? What makes you smile? What are you passionate about? What lights you up? It's easy to get stuck in a loop of sadness, denial, and regrets. It, it's also really, really important to remember that we always have a choice to accept that changes happen and move forward in a positive way. So how do we do that, especially during uncertain times? Establishing new routines and rituals. I ski, I golf, I play cards, I go out with Annabelle, I go out with Cher, okay? Those are things I got back to doing. For goodness sake, don't take the world on your shoulders. Don't ever let anyone tell you that you can't control your time. Create happiness and joy by living purposely and intentionally. Recognize your accomplishments. Okay, give yourself a pat on the back. Give yourself a pat on the back for being here. Give yourself a pat on the back for getting up today. I just want to leave you with one thought. Envision the storyline you'd like to be reading about yourself this time next year. Scan your life, your career, your health, your lifestyle, your friendships, your relationships, your money, etc. Plant seeds of intentions so that you can create the big picture. 
a long way cherish each and every day, no matter what comes along. And tell yourself that good things are happening for you. Wonderful, happy surprises are around the corner. Because that's what I did. Look what happened. <laughs>